Commander ban list is quite the controversial thing when you ask opinionated nerds on the internet. The average Commander player just doesn't care. For the most part, the ban list does what it needs to do, which is keep a few suspect cards from ruining games of magic at your local store, but ultimately there are some issues with the ban list, in the sense that it is just not really much of a ban list. I'll explain that statement as we go, but the ban list really is rather small when you consider that Commander involves the entirety of every single magic card ever printed. And I have issues with the ban list in the sense of it not doing what it's meant to do to an extent, and I mean meant to do. And when I say meant to do, it's because whenever I had this conversation with Sheldon about the ban list or rules in Commander, he often talked about how the, the ban list itself was suggestive. It was meant to be uh, an example of the kind of stuff you shouldn't play. The problem with that is that it doesn't give examples of stuff that is universally basically not allowed. Like, for example, Armageddon. This card is basically frowned upon amongst all Commander playgroups, uh, except that the, the most toxic or the most competitive, I guess. But Armageddon doesn't have a version of it on the ban list. I don't think there's a single card that actually blows up lands other than perhaps balance. So the fact that Armageddon and Mass Land Destruction isn't allowed, but not a single example of it is on the ban list, is probably the biggest glaring issue I have with the ban list as an example. Either way, we're going to go through each and every one, how I feel about them, whether they should be banned, what the rationale is, and whether it holds up. And whether you're looking to pick up single products or sealed product using the code Kenobi at checkout, coolstuffinc.com, or buying anything from Karlov Manor, will get you access to this Orc Army token, where it's myself and my dog fighting back the forces of darkness. Hit the link in the description below, use the code, to get 5% off your first order. So let's jump into it, but with the explanation that I'm not gonna be shitting all over it. I think the ban list does work for the most part, barring the example thing I just spoke about. First up, we have anti cards. Any card that allows you to play for anti. So for those of you who don't know, anti used to be a thing where at the beginning of the game, you would shuffle your library and reveal a card from the top of it. And if you were to win that game of magic, you would win that card from your opponent's deck. That's right, magic had a weird take cards from your opponent style thing. And there are a lot of cards that also anti an extra card for a benefit. All of those cards are gone because anti doesn't work anymore and thus these cards basically just have some text removed from them and they were too good or they promote this idea that you might have to take cards from your opponent. Basically anti cards don't exist anymore in magic. There are weird, weird claws from the early days. I need to do a whole video on anti really. There's also all of the cards that have been removed from constructive play. I don't know why the air quotes, they have been. They've been removed from constructive play due to objections towards things like racism and similar. Invoke Prejudice is a good example of this. It's often not actually shown in magic media. I'm gonna put it here because I don't think we should shy away from this. This thing is made by an artist who's made neo-Nazi shit, and they're obviously KKK members in the art. It's called Invoke Prejudice, and the collector number, if you look it up, is also uh, a number related to racism too. This is probably the most worst example on the entire list alongside a load of others that I'm just not going to go into but all of these being cut out of the game there is some arguments among, about a couple of them that people like to get stuck up on but if someone's trying to play like Invoke Prejudice in their Commander deck there's probably a deeper issue than uh, the balancing of a game of Commander they're probably trying to make some sort of political statement so these cards not being allowed is perfectly reasonable on top of that if you have a, even if you have like a political like um, opposition to the points made by Wizards and getting rid of these cards every format in Magic has gotten rid of these cards. So that's not, it's kind of a moot point. It's not really worth conversing over too much, but I thought I'd at least touch upon it. And of course, all conspiracies are also banned, mainly because they are not legal in any format. It's weird to describe them as banned, if I'm honest, because, well, they're not legal in any other format. And by legal is different to banned. When you say banned, it normally insinuates or suggests that the card was too good for that format and have to get taken out of it. Legality, on the other hand, means that it was just never ever playable because it never met uh, a restriction or, or, or a prerequisite to be available in that format. For example, Brainstorm is not banned in modern. Brainstorm is just not legal in modern. It's never been put into a modern legal set and thus has never been tested in those waters. It would be too good though. First up, let's cover Ancestral Recall and by extension, the rest of the Power Nine, except for one. The Power Nine are all banned, not necessarily just on power level, but at the idea that they were giving poor optics rather than power level as described back in 1993. These cards might have been reasonable in a four player environment and I don't necessarily disagree with that. A lot of the power level convo we're gonna have today is how that a card that is inherently way too good is often made not way too good because when you play it, you are then arch enemy. You are then fighting against three other players. 
To explain this, if you were to cast Ancestral Recall and draw three cards for one blue mana in a 1v1 game, it's insane. It's just incredibly powerful. In a multiplayer environment, you're drawing three cards, that's only one card for each of your opponents. Basically, resources kind of need to be multiplied to be good in a commander setting. As well as the play example of you've drawn three cards for one mana, it probably means everyone's gonna be upset with you. A good example of this is Soul Ring. Soul Ring is banned in every format where it's legal. See, I did that wrong there. It's banned in every format that it's been printed into, barring um, vintage, where it's uh, restricted and um, point-based Highlander formats where it costs points to play it. The reason I bring that up is that Soul Ring is just way too good in 1v1. If someone plays a Soul Ring on, on turn one in a 1v1 environment, that's why it's banned in uh, Dual Commander as well, 1v1 Commander and they tap it every turn they're on, the amount of advantage they're getting over every turn is two, four, six, eight. They get so much more mana than you're getting. In a multiplayer environment, it makes them enemy number one, and the mana they're getting doesn't outpace the mana of the three people they're trying to beat. That said, I still think the power nine cards are too good. I don't think Black Lotus should ever be legal in Commander. But the point that they were making in the original post was that it was banned for optics rather than power level. The rationales on the website for the Commander Rules Committee have been dug out of old resources from defunct uh, um, uh, forum posts and similar and put into one place. All this stuff was on the internet but it was spread around over the years that Command has become a thing. The fact that they said this is a barrier to entry back in like 2009. I said 1993 earlier, I misspoke because I was looking at my screen where it has the release date of the card. All of the rationales for why these cards have been banned are available on the commander.net, and commander.net. And originally they were floating around in different websites and different forums that are now defunct. And as of last week, it was announced that they'd dog them all out and put them onto the main website for you to go and look at the rationale. Some of those rationales have aged uh, not poorly, but they don't quite fit now. For example, with the recall one and other Power Nines that basically copy the same wording, it says that it was for optics because they didn't want people to spend hundreds and now thousands of the addition of dollars in Power Nine to be able to play the game. They go as far as to say Ancestral Recall was an iconic and expensive card at the time it was banned. And removing it from the card pool was intended to combat the notion that Commander is prohibitively expensive and inaccessible as a format. I absolutely vibe with this idea at the time and still now. The only problem is that this rationale, this example of why something might not be legal or playable in the format, it also goes on to other cards. Cards that I quite like that, you know, come up from time to time about whether they should be legal in Commander. Guy that's cradle at time of writing the cheap the cheapest one you can find in Europe is 500 euros for one that's probably been chewed by a dog. Really being 700 to a thousand dollars depending on condition. This card is very expensive and very powerful. I love playing with the copy that I've had for like the best part of a decade now. But often when I see it at tables it's actually proxied. That's an interesting conversation around the, the cost of entry for a casual format, right? But Gaia's Cradle is easily way more expensive than what Recall would have been in the founding of the Commander format in the early noughties, let's say. I'm guessing that's when it started. So I think that rationale that it makes Commander look like an expensive format actually applies to a lot of cards like Cradle or Tabernacle, like Crypt and, and, and Dual Lands. There's a lot of cards that that rationale extends to. Beyond that, one of the Power Nine is still legal in the format. Time Twister is a three mana, each player shuffles their hand and grave it into their library and draws seven cards. It resets everyone's hand. It's basically a Wheel of Fortune plus some Graveyard Hate strapped onto it. And it's by far the least powerful of the Power Nine, or at least often considered that way in most formats. That's why it's legal in Commander. Or at least that's what I always thought. But the argument is about cost. A collector's edition of this card is $900. If you actually want to get an alpha or a beta, you look at like nine grand, uh, 9,000 euros for the cheapest, most dog chewed one. Actually, you probably am cheap enough for more dog chewed, but you get the point. This card is incredibly expensive with the uh, non legal one being 900 bucks. Why is that card now legal if that's the logic we're going with? Balance is a card that makes all players have a balanced time, in theory. You know, discarding hand size and sacking creatures and lands down to the smallest number among players in the game. They even explain on the website that it looks like it's a good catch-up thing, but in reality it just slows the game down grotesquely. And it's true, that's what balance does for the most part. People don't tend to cast a balance and then win. It's very, that's how you kind of do it in Vintage and Vintage Cube. You normally have Planeswalkers in play, for example. Balance everyone and now you're just miles and miles ahead. Or you set up a stacks environment that isn't really the most fun or agency providing situation to play commander in. Thus it is banned and arguably this is the one that suggests that things like Armageddon and similar crawl the game down to a slow pace shouldn't be allowed. But that's where I come to an issue with the, this, this part of the ban list is that like cards that slow the game down like Wrath of God perhaps or Farewell. 
Farewell is by far the modern card from recent times that has reset games and added an extra hour long period to games that I have played in recent memory. Should this be legal under the argument that it removes a lot of agency or resets the game or slows things down? Again, as an example, balance suggests that there are many other cards that shouldn't be played. So we kind of have to, all of us collectively, create like a social contract that comes off of the ban list, I guess, that jumps from there. It's a springboard. It's a weird one. Biorhythm, an eight mana sorcery that says each player's life total becomes the number of creatures he or she controls. This one, I think an eight mana sorcery probably shouldn't be on the ban list because people should be able to deal with eight mana sorcery uh, win conditions. Like for example, having creatures in play, not letting people set up the situation to for it to kill you or having counter magic, spell pierces, or just like fucking the person over that's playing it. However, it is one of those cards that can just blind sign someone unprepared or playing a relaxed game of commando where they don't think they have to keep up the interaction. I just one shots or quadra shots and multiple people out of the game. So I think Biorhythm being on the ban list is perfectly reasonable for a format where you're not meant to be keeping up spell piss to, to make sure you don't lose the game. Not everyone's playing CDH. Braid's Cabal Minion is a four mana 2-2 two, two human minion that says at the beginning of each player's upkeep that player sacrifices an artifact, a creature or a land. Originally this was banned simply as a commander but you could play it in your 99 and then they consolidated those two lists together and made the ban list simpler to some people's excitement and to other people's frustration because they enjoy playing braids. Braids is another one of those things where it's basically smokestacking your opponent. Smokestacks is a lot more extreme than braids but it's in the same sort of wheelhouse. If you haven't noticed smokestacks is where the name stacks comes from. Playing a stacks deck that slows the game down, prisons it, grinds it, makes it hard to actually play magic and then eat out incremental value to a win, a deck archetype that people fucking hate and is absolutely frowned upon in casual and even the higher power levels of commander. Yeah, both these cards do that, but only one of them is banned because it can be in your command zone. If Smokestacks was a legendary creature, if they put in Smokestacks onto a legendary creature, it'd probably see a ban too. I get it, but again, it's not really... It's an example to tell us what we should and shouldn't be doing, but then there's like better versions of Braids out there like Smokestacks. Maybe I'm maybe I'm being too unfair to Braids. Braids is pretty good. Saying it's not as good as Smokestacks is probably wrong. Channel. Yep, it's banned because, well, there's a few reasons. One, Channel is one of the most powerful cards in all of Magic. Like, it is up there. It's restricted and timeless. It's the best card when it was in no banless historic recently. It's pointed in most point systems and it's restricted in vintage. This card allows you to cast Eldrazi on turn one or two and really take over the game. Beyond that, in Commander, you have 40 life. So anything like this, where you have to pay life for a resource, life is a resource. And in Commander, you have a fucking abundant amount of it. On top of that, they list the idea that you've always got something to do with it, like cast your commander, which isn't always true. Colored mana pips on the commander can make it restrictive. But ultimately, channel being banned is an absolute no-brainer. The card is obnoxiously powerful and should only see play in the most cutthroat competitive formats. Chaos Orb is an example of a dexterity card where you've got to physically do something with a card. It's banned everywhere because flipping cards onto the table, it sounds funny, but it's not great logistically. Good riddance to kind of funny rubbish. Coalition victory, baby. Oh, look at that big old mana cost. Five mana in all colors, so Wooburg. White, blue, black, red, and green, plus three. You win the game if you control a land of each basic land type and a creature of each color. If Coalition victory was a trigger in upkeep or trigger in end step on a permanent, it'd be less of a problem. It does the same thing with Biorhythm, where you can play a very casual game of magic and the game is, you know, gummed up and interesting and then someone just like taps their mana, casts a sorcery, someone doesn't have a counter spell, bada bing bada boom, they win on the spot. I used to believe that Coalition Victory should come off the ban list. I had a very, not strong opinion, that's not the right word, but I was pretty much dead set that it was just wasn't good enough to be on the ban list. It's a fucking, another eight mana sorcery. However, the ability to uh, cast Coalition Victory and win has become easier and easier over time as more lands have been introduced to more land types like the Triomes. We've got a fucking ley line in Karlov Mana that like single handedly is all five colors and makes all one of your lands all five types. That one ley line allows you to win off this. So winning off this has got easier and easier over time will only get easier as we get more lands of more land types and more good four and five color permanents. In essence, I don't think five card decks should get to include a f eight mana sorcery that instantly wins in the game. I say instantly. Sorcery speed wins in the game as an auto include all five color decks. I don't think that's healthy or good for the game. And thus, I've changed my opinion over time that Coalition Victory is basically like Biorhythm and that it shouldn't be too good. 
but in a relaxed commander environment, it absolutely is, because people can get blindsided by it and feel incredibly bad. Now, there is an interesting point here about other cards, again, that do the same thing. Insurrection is an eight mana wombo combo. You cast this and you win the game if there's things in play. I think it requires more of a setup in a way, because if someone's got a sack outlet on board, they can sack their board away. If they've got uh, ways to animate creatures or artifact lands to block with artifact lands, uh, mute vaults and key runes and all that sort of shit, they can still potentially block. There is actually more interplay with um, Insurrection than there is with these, but Insurrection is dangerously close to being one of these things, and was in a pre-con once. And recall the Aeon's Torn, a 15 mana, 15, 15, this spell can't be countered. When this spell is cast, take an extra turn, it's got flying, it's got protection from spells of one or more color, annihilate a six, and when it gets discarded or put into a bin, you have to shuffle that bin into your library. The last clause is arguably a downside, but it's also good against Mill to stop you from reanimating this little bastard. And by little bastard, I mean huge bitch. Emrakul is the best or creature ever printed just by raw stats and what it does. It is insanely powerful. And whilst 15 mana is a lot, you can sneak attack it, you can show and tell it, you can ramp it, you can do all sorts of things to cheat this motherfucker into play. And beyond that, it can be played in all decks and all decks can aim to cheat this it becomes a bit homogenizing in that sense. Getting to 15 mana in Commander is not that hard. I, I know you should be able to interact with people on the way to that 15 mana, but this thing takes an extra turn as a minimum thing when you cast it. And you also can't kill it once it's alive with instant speed or sorcery speed, um, or sorcery spells. You can overing it though. I remember people playing with Emrakul in Commander. I had a friend who just constantly fucking cast it. I think I remember him... Did he cast it and copy it non-legendarily? I'm having like Vietnam flashbacks here. Either way, I get it. The other Eldrazi are still grown inducing, like um, Ember, uh, the Kozalek and Ulamon, especially the originals with Annihilator. Cause Annihilator is a pretty feel bag mechanic. I personally love it. I've talked about that in videos before, I need to talk about it again. But I think Annihilator 6 on this like protective thing that gives you an extra turn is a lot more feel bad than the other two. So I completely understand why this is the one that they decided to just cut out of the format. It's too good. Erayo, sorry, Tommy's Ascendant is a two mana one one. When you play four spells on a turn, you flip it over and it counts as the first spell played by each player each turn as a legendary enchantment. That's right, you have to play two spells. You have to bait out the trigger with one spell and then cast another one. It's oppressive as fuck. It's been on the ban list since since when I started playing Commander back in like 2009 or something, and I absolutely understand it. I remember reading it, the first time I read it was on the ban list for Commander, I'd never seen the card before, and I was just, I was floored. Even as a fucking scrub, I was like, how do you beat that? Maybe it was banned as Commander, but available in 99. I feel like I played it at some point, but I could be wrong. Falling Star, another dexterity card. You flip onto the battlefield and it does damage to stuff. Yeah, okay, that sounds cool, but it's not good, no. Fast Bond. Okay, so this card is probably the closest I think to not being too good. I do like me a Fast Bond deck, so I'm a little bit biased here. The idea with Fast Bond is that you can pay a life to basically make an extra land drop out of your hand. And essentially, it gets one player way too far for it, and the life loss doesn't matter in Commander. It's not really much of a downside when you go from, say, 40 life to 35, and you now have five more lands in play. It also combos with, like, Crucible of Worlds and Ramble Excavator plus a fetch land, because for two life, you can just play the fetch land like you've been until you're done ramping. It's very strong. Is it too strong for Commander? Yeah, it probably is. Flash. This one I remember making jokes about in intro skits for Dice to Removal, about how it needed to be banned because it was ruining CDH to some extent. All these people were telling me it was ruining CDH. I've only played CDH more recently, and not a huge amount of it either. Flash is at its best when you just flashed in Protein Hulk. You put some fast mana into play, you play Flash, you put Protein Hulk into play, and then Protein Hulk immediately gets sacrificed and you assemble a combo and win. Yeah, it's that fucking simple. The interaction points are very small when you're doing it on turns one and two of a fast mana like Chrome Moxes and similar. Flash is obnoxiously dumb, uh, with Protein Hulk especially, but it's still good if you're just getting like the trigger off of a good powerful creature like a Primeval Titan, which we're coming to. Gifts Ungiven. It's banned, but Intuition isn't banned. I don't really get this. I feel like they're kind of the same card. The idea of Gifts Ungiven that you search for four cards and your opponent gets to pick them like fact or fiction, you get two to hand and two to graveyard. The truth is you can assemble piles of four cards that are impossible to split in a favorable way because you can get like unburial rights, for example, which if it's in the bin or hand, still reanimates one of the other three fatties you've gone and picked. The other thing is you can get two cards and fail to find the other two. And that means, by the way, it's worded, both cards go into the graveyard. So Empire of Whites and Elish Norn, as an example. That's a really, like, basic bitch one. Like, Dread Return plus Thass Oracle is probably better, because you can easily win on the spot off a gift and given by casting this in the player to your right's up end step, passing to you and just going off with a, with a mill plan. Gifts and Given's very good at uh, tutoring up and empowering, like, powerful graveyard-based combos. But is it better than Intuition? 
I guess it's marginally better than intuition. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of gifts and given being being banned. I think that could probably safely come off the list. Go lost, tireless pilgrim, the five mana three five. When it comes to play, search your library for a card, land card and put it into play tapped. And then for seven mana, you know, including Wooberg, it's exile top three cards your library and cast them this turn. Just the best thing to be doing in five color. It fixes your mana. It pays for half its command attacks by fetching your land when you cast it and resolve it. And then it's got a clause in it that means you never have to have to draw cards or use the cards in your hand again. You can just cast things off the top once you get to seven mana. Uh, when this was banned, I just shrugged and said, it's probably about time. Grizzle Daddy, the eight mana, seven, seven, flying, low blinking, pay seven life, draw seven cards. In Commander, you'd easily draw 21 or 28 cards off this the moment you stuck it. You'd reanimate it, you'd cheat into play, you'd copy it, you'd steal it out of people's decks. It was an oppressive force when it was legal. Little story time, someone in my group opened it in uh, the pre-release for, was it? I was, I was in the store. I glanced at my monitor, but the copy on screen's from uh, Modern Masters 2. Anyway, they opened it. I really wanted to trade for it because I was the only person with like a black deck that would be playing it. They were like, no, 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 I don't want you to have it. I'm not going to trade it for you. And I couldn't afford to buy one because it was like 30 bucks or whatever. And then it was banned rather quickly and it just sat in that person's folder until it rotted and it wasn't worth anything. That's pretty funny. I wonder if it's still in their folder to this day because Grizzle Bond's had a history of going up in price being a legacy staple then down again as it's got reprinted. And where is it now? Six dollars for a Grizzle Brand? It's a fucking bargain. Hole Breacher, a three mana, three, two flash creature that says if an opponent would draw a card except for the first one in their turn, or in their draw step, should we say, create a treasure token. They talk about how it's one blue mana, so it's quite easy to splash, but that means it's easy to cast in any deck. And yes, it just, it just hates on people a little bit, and then when you cast a wheel, like Wheel of Fortune or, or Time Twister, as we talked about, or not Time Twister, sorry, Time, the Time Twister, you just wheel the table, no one gets to draw any cards, and you make a million mana. The card was very fucking dumb. One of those cards that can absolutely, because it has Flash, blindside you as well. Similar to just like, you know, having a big battle, and then someone just untaps and casts a sorcery at the point they haven't tapped out and wins the game. Similar energy. I think it's a cool card, and I enjoy playing with it, but I get why it was banned, because it's bad at casual to even medium and higher power levels. It's probably only good at the peak of the format and CDH. So I'm glad it's gone. I own a Shield of Amiria, a 9 mana 7-7 seven, seven flying creature that you basically reanimate or cheat into play. ETB, not ETB, sorry, whenever you, as it enters the battlefield, you pick a colour, so it's not an ETB trigger, it just enters with this clause already. And as it enters, pick a colour, and opponents can't cast spells with that colour. That's not a trigger, by the way. So you can't have it trigger and then you shoot it with a plowshares. If they name white, which they probably won't, but if they name white, you're never plowshowing it. Iona was banned because it was oppressive towards people on two or one color strategies. If there's two mono red decks at the table, well, the game's probably over already, but if there's two mono red decks at the table, someone names red, those players don't get to play much magic. There are obviously answers to this. The one I always come to is like Meteor Golem, a very playable colorless card that blows up shit. I think Meteor Golem's great and more people should play it. But again, I kind of get why they don't want this to be in a casual format. Iona is just too good. But I kind of get why they don't want this in a casual format. It's just oppressive and absolutely feels bad. And it also makes people playing monocolored decks feel incredibly shit upon. And I think people should be encouraged to play monocolored, not disenfranchised, disencouraged to do so, because I think four color decks are a dog shit and I hate them. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm being an old man that just shouting at clouts. Why do I hate four color decks? I don't know, I just think magic is more... The sanctity of magic is preserved when you play one, two or three colors. Four and five colors, stupid. That's not a very good rationale. Stupid. I just feel like it's not really magic when you can cast any color of any spell. The color pie is important. There you go. That's a better rationale. Can you tell I'm tired? My baby had a bit of a sleep regression last night, so I'm uh, struggling a little bit for sleep. Caracas, it can bounce your commander. I think this would be really cool, and I love this card. It's my favorite lands of all time. But alas, everyone else disagrees with me. Banding commander. I get it but I still think it'd be fine. Leovold, it's a legendary command zone version of Holbreacher with extra steps where you get to draw cards if they target your creatures. Mainly it's a command zone Holbreacher, banned for the very same reason. Library of Alexandria, this being on the ban list makes me laugh. It's a very expensive card. One copy will set you back about $16,000. I think it being banned on price tag at this point is both it makes sense in terms of their rationale, but I also think it's kind of silly. Ultimately, it just says you get to draw a card by tapping it if you have exactly seven cards in hand, which in a multiplayer environment isn't that strong. It's a very strong card. I love this card in Vintage Cube, but I just don't think it's too powerful for Commander. 
But unbanning a $17,000 cardless land going every deck is probably not the best thing to do for Commander. Limited resources. When it enters the battlefield, each player chooses five lands here. She controls and sacks the rest. As long as there's 10 or more lands in play, players cannot play lands. It was designed for two players to play with it when neither of you can get above five mana. A wonderful effect that I think is very funny. Not really great in uh, Commander of all places in a multiplayer format, especially when it costs one mana. Plays on turn one and no one's getting above three lands. Lutri the Spell Chaser is a three mana, three two otter that doubles the spell when it enters the battlefield. The thing is, its companion requirement to be in the companion zone is that each card in your starting deck has a different name, so it's automatically available to all blue and all red players in Commander. Or should I say anyone who's playing blue and red? Basically, if you have blue and red in your Commander's color identity, you will just have a loot tree in your companion zone forever in every deck that does that. It's an extra card for just those decks. Now, some people say it's not that powerful, and I agree, the effect isn't that strong, but just every color combination that has blue and red in it have extra, uh, one extra card over everyone else is incredibly dumb. Now, some people are like, well, why don't we just allow people to have an extra bear in their zones? And now we just start adding extra rules that are just dumb. Like, there's no reason to unpack Commander with loads of fucking caveats and rules to allow you to play the Otter. What I do agree with is that it should be playable in the 99. And if someone said to me before a game, can I play this in my main deck? I wouldn't stop them at all. I'd, I'd ask them to crack on and do so. But it quite simply can't be in your companion zone because having one more card than any other color in the game is too good. Just having an extra flash 3-2 is too good. Like, I, it's really hard to label this anymore, but I had so many people argue this with, with me that I'm kind of fucking sick of it, but it's too fucking good. You having an extra body and or blocker or beta is too good. You shouldn't be allowed an extra card just because you're in blue-red. A color pairing that already gets a lot of love from Wizards. Panoptic Mirror, a five mana artifact that allows you to tap it and pay X to uh, exile an instant or sorcery underneath it. And then you get to copy that instant or sorcery in your upkeep. Basically, you get extra turns forever. Like if you put time up under it, you just get extra turns every turn and you lock everyone else out of the game. That's like the fucking lowest power level. You can also do other dumb and noxious shit with it, but you're just gonna put time up under it. So don't, cause you can't, cause it's banned. Good riddance. Paradox Engine, a card that I've played in many a deck and I've played on the channel a million times. I even made a video called Ban This Filth a month before this was banned. That's right, I can see into the future and or have a lot of influence. What can I say? I'm a social media influencer, baby. But Paradox Engine just basically goes infinite with a ham sandwich. If you have an artifact uh, or anything that taps mana in play, even a mana dork and you cast a spell, bada bing bada boom, you got some mana and now you're off to the races and you're coming all over the shop. It's banned for good reason. Primeval Titan, a card that takes over games of command People would flicker it, they would bounce it, they would replay it, they would they would duplicate it, and steal out of other people's decks with bribery effects. It was like Emrakul. Probably for Titan and Emrakul are very similar, weirdly similar, considering one of them does so much pandemonium and the other one kind of gets you out of value. But either way, both of them are like do dominate games of Commander when they're illegal. Because one of them can be in every deck and you can cheat to it or ramp to it, and the other one can be stolen, duplicated, copied, flickered, and all sorts of shit. Both of them need to be banned. Prime time in particular is banned because of the getting two lands out of your deck and with, a, with absolutely no restrictions whatsoever. So you can get like Field of the Dead and similar, Agaria's Cradle, Tabernacle, which should be banned, I guess, under the same logic the Library of Alexandria is. It can get Library if Library was legal. And comparing that to the other Titans that like make zombies or resurrect a three CMC creature or whatever, it's insane how good that tutor is. Chews are already very, very good in Commander for making your decks incredibly consistent. So Premier Titan gives you two tutors for two of the best resources in the game. Yeah, it's strong. Prime of Titan is banned in Commander, and it's one of the best cards in Timeless and Modern right now as well. I've actually got a whole video coming about how Prime of Titan is easily the greatest green creature of all time. It is the absolute goat, and it's consistently been so. Where Tarmogoyf has fell off and is no longer good, with some real boomer energy, Prime of Titan continues to this day to absolutely fucking slap. Prophet of Cruffix! It untaps all creatures and land you control and gives you your sp creatures flash. That's right, you get to take extra turns in other people's turns. That's why it's banned. Seaborn Muse is half a card of this, and some people think that should be banned. The flash thing pushes Prophet of Cruffix so far over the edge of being good that I kind of miss it, but I'm glad it's gone. Recurring Nightmare! A three mana spell that says bounce it back to your hand, sack a creature, and reanimate something from your bin. It will be the only thing you do for the rest of the game is what they say in the um, the rationale and it's true because you always reanimate something that creates tokens and then if the thing dies or gets sacked off you can reanimate the big thing again. A mere battle spheres, hermitries and stuff. That's like a weak way of doing it. Just swapping a cheap creature for a big creature. Yeah, 
Recurring Nightmare is kind of nuts. I think it's probably not too powerful in the sense that people won't just win the game off Recurring Nightmare like they will with a lot of the cards on this list. But I think the argument that it is the only thing you'll do forevermore is true. But I don't think there's a reason to keep it on the ban list. Recurring Nightmare is very, very powerful and very, very fun to play with. I actually think it probably would be fine coming off the ban list. I don't think it's going to ruin anyone's commander games. With Fellow Slano Emissary, a two mana, two one that taps for green mana with the forest you control. Uh, this is deceptively good. Like, it's obviously good, but if you have this in the command zone, you're playing a lot of forests. Like, turn four, you're, you're, you're playing eight mana spells minimum. That's not including dorks and other ramp spells. But Fellos is insane at ramping. I understand why people don't want that in the command zone. I get it. Shaharazad asked you to go under the table and play a sub game of magic. We well, don't have to get under the table, but that's the only way to actually resolve this if you're not a character. It's banned because playing sub games of Commander in the middle of a game of Commander is dumb. Uh, do I need to explain that to you any more than that? I don't think so. Sundering Titan, it ETBs and it blows up one land of each type. And it leaves and does the same. You flicker it and you're blowing up 10 lands. Maybe this is the closest to Armageddon we've got. Sway of the Stars, a 10 mana. Now we're getting into silly numbers. 10 mana, each player shuffles his or her hand, graveyard, and permits if she owns into his or her library. Draw seven cards, each player becomes seven. Becomes seven. That's not how it says. It says life total becomes seven. Each player just becomes the number seven. In essence, it's a board wipe, a draw seven, a reset of graveyards, and your life becomes seven. It's like farewell if farewell walked into the room and kicked your dog. At 10 mana, it makes me laugh that it's banned because it does not win you the game and it's 10 mana, but at the same time, fuck this card. I don't want to ever see this card cast in the same room as me, let alone the same game as me. Good riddance to bad rubbish. Sylvan Primordial was their attempt to make a primeval titan that was better in Commander. It's a seven mana six eight with reach. When ETBs, you destroy one non-creature permanent that player controls for each opponent, and then you search for a forest card for each one destroyed and put it into play tapped. In essence, it blows up three of the best permanents in play that are non-creature. That includes lands, by the way. And then you get three forests, basic forests. You can get like um, uh, dual lands and stomping grounds off this shit. And you flicker it, or you bounce it, or you copy it. And suddenly you're doing the Primeval Titan thing, but you're also blowing on everyone's lands. Yeah, this is like Terastodon, but but no one else gets any of the fun. You just get to keep it all and gobble it up like some sort of greedy cunt. I remember this being legal. Same person that was casting Emrakul consistently was copying this thing in Riku of Two Reflections. It was fucking obnoxious. Time Vault, it's an infinite combo in Vintage. This is banned for good reason. If you untap it with the Voltaic Key, tap it, make it to the next turn, untap your Voltaic Key. Oh, whoopsie, you've got infinite. Good game. Tinker, it finds the obnoxious infinite combos, or just makes a Blight Steel early, or Bolas Citadel early. One of the most powerful cards in Vintage. Again, banned for good reason. Telerian Academy, it's Gaia's Cradle Bot for Artifacts. That sounds worse, but it's not. It's way, way better. Imagine if you just tap, you know, you've got Soul Ring in play, and, and your Mox Amber in play, and that now ramps up one of your lands. I love this card with an absolute passion. But yeah, it's banned and Guy's Cradle probably should be too. Trade Secrets. At the end of this video, I'll link to a video about this. I've got a whole video about Trade Secrets. So watch that video. Upheaval, we turn all permits to their own hands, including lands. That's right. Do you think this sounds fun? It's not fun. How it normally goes is that the player casting it floats like five mana while they're doing it, and then still has a land drop available too, right? They cast Upheaval, have five mana flowing, they play a land for turn, go to six mana, play a Sol Ring, or replay their Sol Ring, should I say, and just replay some mana box, and just, they then are playing magic and everyone else is about to turn zero. It's a slow way of winning the game. So like balance, it's not really the catch up you think it is. Absolutely reasonable ban. Yorgmoth's bargain. Six mana, skip your draw step, pay one life, draw a card. Yeah, this is banned for the same reasons that Grizzlebrand is. I think it's significantly worse than Grizzlebrand, but I also still get it because life is a resource and in Commander you have a lot of that fucking resource. And that's the Commander ban list. In short, there's a couple of cards that I think should come off. Like, I'm not really sure that Gifts and Given is really as brutal and, like, back-breaking as it feels when you talk about all the combos it can enable. Meanwhile, if you've played one game of Commander where someone's flicking a Sylvan Primordial, you, you then know why Sylvan Primordial can fuck off into the sun. Ultimately, I think the ban list works for taking a lot of obnoxious shit and not letting you play it. But if we're honest, there's tons of obnoxious shit out there. From Gaia's Cradle to Armageddon to Winter. All of these cards are legal within Commander, but they're more obnoxious than some cards on the list I've just gone through. Ultimately, I don't want to add more cards to the ban list. If anything, I'm the proponent of taking more things off and just seeing how 
games go. Because Commander tends to work. That's the that's the real crux of the matter, right? No matter what you feel about the ban list and it not quite achieving what it's meant to in terms of giving examples of what you shouldn't play, Commander still works. But the reason Commander works is because it's a social format where we all kind of agree to make it work. Without the active, like, cooperation of four people at a table trying to make Commander work, it doesn't. And we've all played those games where one person is out going out of the way to pub stomp everyone else by playing a deck that is way more powerful than everyone else. And that's how they get their kicks. That's how they go home and come at the end of the night. In essence, the Commander ban list is actually way bigger than the ban list on the official website for the Commander Rules Committee. Because if you play Obliterate at a table, people are going to punch in the dick. So keep on keeping on. Keep on playing Commander and keep on playing Commander through the social contract that you agree with with your friends. That's one of the most both frustrating and weird parts of the format, but also one of the most fun parts of the format because you can tailor make your experience to suit your playgroup. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Does the commander ban list piss you off? Is there a card on there that you really want to fucking play with? Let me know. In the meantime, why don't you check out this video where we talk about trade secrets. And I also got accused of uh, cheating and colluding because of trade secrets. It's a wild situation to be in. That's it, that's the end of the video. You can click that one or fuck off. Ta-ta for now.